Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone's been having a great day. Um, today, I just got back to the gym. Um, it feels fucking... Feels great. Your boy is a little bit exhausted. I'm not used to it anymore. I had to ease back into it. Um, I did kind of fuck up, I think. Um, I got a little bit too excited. Like, the first two exercises, I actually did progressively overload. But then I gassed out afterwards, so... <laughs> Um, I did not hit any of my numbers. I did hit the load and it didn't drop dramatically. Like I may have lost like a rep or two, but, um, yeah, definitely gotta get used to it. He's back into it. Um, yeah, but, uh, that's not what we're talking about today. Today I want to talk about, um, the annals of Imperial Rome. I've read enough to kind of give my first, I guess, analysis of it, even though I haven't passed Tiberius yet. But Tiberius is the longest reigning emperor that's going to be in that book, uh, which is a close second is going to be Claudius. I know, I know he has Claudius, right? Yeah, yeah, because Nero, uh, he ends with Nero in 68 AD with his suicide and the year of the four emperors. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I believe Tiberius is, was 19 years and Claudius was 14. But yeah, it is a very astute observation of the of the dynamic of the Senate and how it changes as the, the formulation that the principal comes into the forefront, becomes the the new way of government after, you know, Augustus and all that. Um, it's, it's schizophrenia. It's uh, how there are a bunch of schizophans, sacrophans, sorry, sacrophans. And a bunch of servile little motherfuckers, and they only want to defer responsibilities and all the major decisions to Tiberius now, because they just want to toe the line. They don't want to get obviously they get killed. Like for justifiable reasons, they kind of are just like, okay, I don't want to do anything that's gonna fuck me, cause I don't want to die. Oh, a lot of people die. You know, a lot of senators' bones were part of that pyramid. Uh, that basically was the foundation for Augustus's reign, you know. Um, and it goes right from the very beginning. It talks about the funeral of Augustus and how they created a, a whole religious college for him. I would try to get deified. I would try to, um, he enacted all these laws and his rules and stuff like that. And people would love them. But at the same time, you know, he does make, he does point out that this guy really did kill and murder people. Because he does make a really good argument at the very beginning talking about the legacy of Augustus. And he's like, oh yeah, because a lot of people try to make the case that he was just a good guy. And he was the one that really tried his very best to bring change in the world in a good way. To stop the chaos. And that's why he did these things because he was a good guy and he was out for the community. But then Tacitus also makes the case that this guy was just an opportunist. He just took advantage of the situation for power and glory. And that was all he ever cared about. He had no problems in murdering people. He had no problems with the prescriptions and the seizure of property enacted by the second triumvirate with him. Along with Lepidus and Marcus Antony. Or Marcus Antonius, which is the proper name, of course. Uh... And that's what he talks about. He's like, bro, this guy butchered, lied, and stole his way to the top. You know, Tacitus also talks about how treaties with Augustus really didn't mean anything because he had made a treaty at Lugdunum and Tarentium. And neither of those two things matter because, you know, those were the two treaties that basically confirmed the triumvirates. Even though the one at uh, uh, Tarentum Lepidus was already out by then. I mean, he really didn't have a whole lot of influence. He was Pontifus Maximus, and then he had like Sardinia and Sicily, and he got ousted by uh, Augustus. He's like, you can retire, but you're out of here. Um, and then, no, th yeah, yeah, yeah. Be no, but that was before Tarentum, because I think Tarentum was just Anthony and, and Octavian, and then a couple of years later, it's Actium. So, yeah, he talks about that, Tacitus. Um, I don't think he's a really good, he's a big fan of the Principate. Um, he does put Tiberius in a very bad light. Like, he's a very suspicious man. He's very cold and calculating. Not, not a very calculating. Well, cold and calculating and just very difficult to understand. He's like a chimera. Like you can't really... Can't get a fix on what he's about, what he is, what he really means. You know, he makes these fucking ridiculous, preposterous 
uh, statements how he's, he wants to bring back the republic and he wants to bring back all these virtues, the republican virtue and the power of the, the, the senate. And people are like, dude, shut the fuck up. Nobody believes this shit. Like, no, you don't. You're a liar. And like, you know, and, and Tacitus focuses on that. Like, you know, like he does good things and he says all these things, but then he fucks himself over by making ridiculous statements such as that. And um, it talks about the rebellions and the revolts that happened right after the death of Augustus and the invasions of Germans. And then you have the, uh, the, the, what, the not the Sassanids, um, the Parthian Empire. It's a very, my apologies on your boy's time. It's a very thorough book. Uh, I still, like I said, I haven't really got too much into it. Um, he does talk about Germanus, Germanicus's com campaigns in Germany and how he was getting a lot of love. And, and he starts talking about the, re the growing resentment of Tiberius towards Germanicus as a potential rival. Um, you know, how he starts killing people and then how you start throwing in the treason trials and slowly but surely people start getting prosecuted and getting murdered. And he talks about the rise of genius. Um... And then, and then uh, famously, there's always that fucking uh, 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 prejudice against, you know, the whole evil stepmother thing with Livia and Agrippina and all, and, all the ch and all the women. He basically has, like, the utmost suspicion towards them because, you know, they're, they're stepmothers and always plotting the way to become, to get their children to become power based, like, to become part of the power. And that's what he alludes uh, uh, when he talks about Augustus. He's like, oh yeah, Augusta. He he was probably fucking poisoned by, by the Augusta by his wife, and just to make sure Tiberius was there because she probably had a big hand, hand big hand in um in a group of Posthumus getting killed. Even though Tiberius was like, oh, I didn't do anything, uh, you know, and he arrested the guy who assassinated him. Apparently, it's very thorough. It's it's really interesting, of course. Um, can't wait to read more. Obviously, after Tiberius, I can't even imagine how entertaining and the ridiculous stories that I'm going to hear when it comes to Caligula. Uh, and then, you know, it talks about Caligula too, about, oh, he was called Caligula because it means little boots. Because Germanicus would parade him around the, the the camps and shit in Germany and go, I mean, well, in Gaul and, and yeah, Gaul, Germany and all these, and all these other places. It's a quite interesting book, and there's always just something new to learn when it comes to Roman history. Of course, everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, but other, but even that, um, Tess is an excellent, excellent writer, and um, I can't wait to continue and finish the book. Um, I'm almost halfway. I'm not quite halfway. I'll probably make another video once I finish with Tiberius. Um, because a lot of people are dying right now. And it's pretty crazy how people start getting butchered. Like, we're not butchered, but, like, the, the whole treason trial shit starts really popping up soon. Well, it's already... It's already catching the momentum, I guess you could say, in the, in the story. With, within the story, within the time uh, that I'm reading. But, uh, yeah, I hope to read it. I'm well, not up to read it. Um, I hope it... There's up to I mean, right now it's living up to his expectation, that's for sure. And then afterwards, I'm going to read the 12 Caesars by Suetonius and see how that plays out. So, hope you guys enjoy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Help your boy out. You know, I'm trying to make this a daily thing as hard as I possibly can. Um, if a day here or there doesn't pop up, then it is what it is. But, uh, like I said, Hope you all have a great day, you know, until next time. Peace.